Hey guys, Sukshop here with a really stupid video today. You might be asking why I'm making such a dumb video, and don't worry, I was asking that way before you. Uh, the truth is I've had a pretty crappy week and struggled quite hard to motivate myself to do things, so I'm saying fuck it and making something different because, well, I, I don't really know why. I'm fully aware a lot of you guys won't care about this video, it's not my normal serving by far, but whatever. Let's try to kick back, relax, and bathe in the ridiculousness that are memes. There's no specific tier list ranking of memes in this meme list, but then again, why the hell would you be concerned about such a thing in a list that is literally depicting memes? If this is something that has caused concern for you, then I genuinely suggest you go step outside and seriously reconsider your life. Life is precious, beautiful, a miracle in itself, and you're sitting there worrying about the ordering of memes in a stupid ass video. Then again, I'm sitting here making this video, so I'm probably just as doomed as you are. Whatever, so, our first meme is the namesake of this video. The 5.5 fucking K embarrassment from the GM of H2K, Rich. Now this ain't a slight against the man himself, by all accounts H2K seems to be a smoothly run operation. They put up high calibre teams each split and the players don't have anything bad to say when they dip from the team. And whereas team running seems to be H2K Rich's strong suit, contract negotiation and PR certainly isn't. During the Season 5, Season 6 off-season, Sven Skeren was informally connected in a move from his old and recently relegated team, SK Gaming, to H2K, who was looking to upgrade in their jungle position. However, the very influential NA powerhouse TSM, and by very influential I mean very fucking rich, approached Sven Skeren about the possibility of joining their team for IEM San Jose and beyond, to replace the recently departed Santorin as TSM's highly necessary scapegoated EU jungler. Now, a deal between H2K and Sven was somewhat already in place though. Nothing signed, nothing official, just a verbal confirmation. It's all a bit like when you need someone to copy the maths homework off of and your mate agrees to let you do it at break, only then to wander off with that overly playful girl with big knockers who doesn't wear a bra. Cue in Rich's awful and desperate attempts to sway Sven into staying with H2K, including passive aggressive arguing, threats of legal action, and of course, offering an unprecedented and mind blowing signing bonus of 5.5 fucking K. Now, ignoring the fact that Rich picked a fight with the biggest brand in league history and arguably all of esports, $5,000 really ain't that much to sweeten the deal for a player going to TSM. Sven Skeren would earn twice that amount if he was just hired to pluck the dingleberries out of Bjergsen's arse tufties, which is actually quite an accurate depiction of his in-game expectations. In the end, Rich may have lost his player, but we gained a grand old meme, so it's pretty worth it. In fact, Rich himself even embraces it, as you can see, with this dank style of shoe. But for real though, what is it with GMs being awful at player management? And that's going to bring us on to the next May May for this video, Challenger Team Owners. To be honest, the whole Challenger series in itself is just one big meme, but that would be a little unfair and like most other people, I really don't care enough about it to write a whole section dedicated to it. But the owners, on the other hand, now there's a great source of quality entertainment. It's no surprise that, quite literally, amateur teams are run in an amateur manner. Teams come and go like whispers in a breeze or clients in a brothel. The turnover of players is exceedingly high and owners don't really care about building a brand or positive team environments, they just want to cash in on that potential LCS Skrilla. Then there are teams like Team Ember, who overpaid and promised to field homegrown NA talent while eventually resulting to importing players before the inevitable crashing and burning. In hindsight, they chose a very apt name for their short-lived existence. I'm sorry, but who thought that paying players like Golden Glue and Glebe 55.5 fucking K to play in Challenger in NA was a good idea, for real. My favourite part is when team owners threaten legal action as a form of intimidation, usually against rival teams to avoid poaching, but often against their own bloody players, despite not understanding a single facet of the legal system or how it works. Here is a quick tip. 
If you're accused of scrounging players out of a few thousand dollars, you ain't gonna fool anyone into thinking you have the financial capacity to invoke a legal battle. Bonus points if the players complain about not being paid while the GM's professional e-honey gets a larger piece of the pie to be hired for living in a house without rent, managing the team's Twitter account, and occasionally cooking for the lads only to unfortunately and very unpredictably disappear in correlation to that of the team's hopes and dreams. My personal favourite was seeing one claim that her strict toxin cleansing diet for the team was a determining factor for their eventually short-lived success. Perhaps if she'd enhanced her strategy and forced the team to only drink holy water blessed by a priest to rid them of the demons of tilt, their team would have made it into the LCS. Moving on now, away from any drama, uh, who am I kidding, the best memes all have drama, it's gotta be the hee hee xd. Nothing makes you feel so alive as when a fresh meme rolls into town, and yes, it's Tyler1, Geodude himself. But no, this isn't a top notch meme because it's funny or because I find the man entertaining by himself. The reason Tyler1 is such a good meme isn't really to do with him, it's his followers. He is the manifestation of everything that everyone hates in League of Legends yet people still revere him. Tyler One, through his omnibenevolence and purified justice, has delivered us to a new world, a world of clarity, of illumination, and of euphoria. And thanks to his good graces, we can witness the angry Twitter ramblings of our fellow players about trolls, about undeserved chat restrictions, about the cancer of solo queue. And we no longer have to think to ourselves, he's probably also toxic in game, but we'll never know. Now, people can declare themselves Tyler1 fans and we can observe their reverence of Tyler's proportional negative reactions over being denied unrealistic demands in a video game, as he does in true alpha male fashion. And then we can remove our doubting thoughts. Ah, we'll say to ourselves, so it is like that. We can experience the delicious irony of those encouraging his actions while also holding the same tolerance for trolls themselves as their god's shiny head has tolerance for hair. Besides, it always makes me laugh to think of the he he xd to be pronounced in the same way as Eminem does. <laughs> but anyway, moving on to something more boring but fucking annoying. It's better nerf Aurelia. It's a joke that spans back eons where different champions needed nerfs, but Aurelia was the one who saw the bat. Not only has Aurelia been nerfed less times than I've been able to successfully hold in a nut while edging, she is actually one of the most disgusting champions around right now. Because Riot have done as they always do, and overbuffed Triforce. 20% CDR and no more shit stats, so it's extremely efficient, make it one of the most vile creations to ever spawn this earth, right next to Beelzebub and Paris Hilton. So whereas this old and dusty meme is usually whipped out during times where the choice to nerf Aurelia would be a bad one, today I'm taking it for a walk because Aurelia actually needs to be gutted and I never want to see her in my games again. I'm sorry Jibei, but it's for the best. Our last meme of the day is going to go over to the Intrinsic Riot Research Department, or more specifically, Rito's over-dependence on it. When I want to take a shit, I don't launch a research task team to determine whether I really want that shit, or whether taking a shit would be too toxic. Though to be fair, that example is a little bit silly and there are more complex matters that definitely do need heavy investment of intense research. Whether or not having an appear offline button would be a good thing, whether a rank system that allows you to queue up with endless amounts of players is truly a competitive experience for solo players, these are all tough questions. After all, we have been saved in the past by top quality research. Thank goodness we discovered that sandbox mode was actually highly toxic before we all turned into vitriol spewing monkeys. Thank goodness we pushed away potential voice communications in game due to the importance of a safe space for those who prefer to type. Hopefully their seven year research plan for replays concludes soon too, so we can find out why being able to watch games back for the purposes of enhanced self-improvement in a highly competitive game would turn me into a warmongering brony. But anyway, that's the end of this shit tier video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, feel free to give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe to me for more educational, well, somewhat educational league content. You can find me on Facebook, on Twitter, and catch me streaming over at twitch.tv slash foxshop. But most importantly, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Have a great day, and I will see you in my next video.